I put more faith in a grand designer than I do in accidents happening numerically. Welcome to a new edition of The Perspective with Mike Sherboneau and Julie Stotland. Today, why pray? Well, there's scientific evidence that prayer and meditation can bring great health benefits to the one who prays and the ones prayed for. So much in life is a mystery, but for thousands of years, prayers have been the link to withstanding and conquering the difficult things throughout our lives. Take God hugs, for example. Some people say coincidence is just that, a random and meaningless act. But others, like our guests today, Squire Rushnell and his wife, Louise Duart Rushnell, know firsthand there aren't any coincidence. God hugs are everywhere. In fact, Louise says the more we pray, the more God hugs we receive. Hmm. Hands together, everyone. Hey, welcome to uh, The Perspective. So glad you're with us today. An exciting program for you. We have two fantastic guests that I know you're going to want to meet in just a moment. But Julie, I want to welcome you today. Glad Thank you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Glad so to be here. So how have the last couple of days been for you? What's been the highlight? Oh, boy. Well, the kids are out of the house, so we decided to tackle one of the bedrooms and reclaim it. Oh, the kids it. are out of the house, so you're redoing their bedroom. Well, we're reclaiming it and making it an office, so that meant a lot of hauling. you have to bring in should... movers? Uh, I, I'm the key mover. How about a bulldozer? I have the just to, to prove for it. You have bruises to prove it. Okay, we're not going to show those. <laughs> anyway, what about you? <laughs> I did the ultimate husband thing. Oh, you did? Yeah, it was painful. I took my wife to Ikea. Oh, yeah. hot date. And she I was, well, I don't know about a hot date, but anyways. <laughs> uh, okay, I got to tell you what happened. So I buy the uh, filing cabinet that she wants, only to find out it's going to take me about 300 hours to put it together. Well, maybe if you pray about it, it'll make it shorter. <laughs> okay, but, but here's what happened. Here's what happened. So she goes to use the uh, the restroom, and you can get two ice cream cones for a buck each. Oh, yes. And, and I went for it. She said, I don't want it. <laughs> I got the two ice creams. I'm putting pushing this thing out <laughs> in the, uh, I was going to say in the stroller, in the I big cart. I see you. And all of a sudden, it went down a bump, and both ice creams went on the ground. I was just devastated. <laughs> sounds like something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that, that's what happened. And, wow. uh, you know, I apologized. Uh, but anyway, it cleaned up my mess. Oh, but today dear. we're going to talk about something far more important. Yes. I'll pray for you that you put it together. Well, thank you. Uh, maybe you just come and help and do it. That would be better. Uh, well, that'd be a real miracle. Yeah. So I want to put a shout out to anybody today. If you'd like to come and help me, uh, you know, put together my IKEA cabinet, I'd be so grateful. But Julie, when you talked about saying I'd pray for you, we often use that word very lightly. We do. And we want to talk about prayer today. Does God answer prayer? Mm -hmm. And I want to think with you folks today, because I know that many times we say, does prayer work? Does it, is it really going to make a difference? And uh, so today, I want to uh, introduce to you uh, two very special gifts. Uh, gifts, I'm going to say, it's guests. And they are a gift to us today. Uh, I'm just delighted that uh, Squire Rushnell is with us, and you've heard of Godwinks, and balancing him out is his wonderful, beautiful wife, Louise Duart Rushnell, and they are here, and they're going to be sharing with us uh, their amazing journey together. Uh, I'm excited, Julie, that, that they're here, and we're going to bring them on right now. Yeah, let's okay. do it. So, hey, welcome to the program today. Thank you. Hi, for being hey. Hi Julie. Hi. Mike, you sound like Charlie Brown with the ice cream dropping, and now you have to do the whole thing with the cabinets. You know, I'm wondering, did that ice cream taste okay with the little granules of dirt? <laughs> okay. You didn't let it go to waste, did you? No, no. So here's so some guy is watching me, and there's a big mess everywhere. And I go to pick it up, but I was still holding on to one cone. Of and I got, a I got a couple licks out of it, and then I finally threw it in the garbage. And I didn't want to admit to my wife that I'd bought the ice cream that she told me <laughs> not to get. But uh, anyways, it just happened. Life happens. Uh, and, I love it. And, okay. And, and life happens with you folks. And you have come up with a, a phrase. Uh, tell us what it means, the phrase, God winks. Because God showed up in so many different ways. He's still showing up. He's showing up in my life. But, uh, you know, we want to hear from you. What is God Winks all about? Well, God Winks happen to everybody. We, we just go around helping people see them because they do happen to everyone. And there are those little coincidences that aren't coincidence, but come from divine order. 
And if you look in the dictionary for coincidence, it'll talk about two events coming together without apparent cause. Well, a God wink is different than that. A God wink are two extraordinary events coming together with a cause. And that cause is God. I and love in the that. Jewish language. Yes, in the Jewish, there is no word for coincidence. Yeah. Because if God is sovereign, he's everywhere. There's no happenstance. There's no coincidence. He's everywhere. So we try to get people, and you talked about, you know, uh, how, well, God is so good, but, you know, what he does is he does things sometimes in simple ways that, but we can go very, very deep in that too. But simply it's a, it's a gift left on your doorstep. You have to open the door and open your gift. And that gift is a God wink. It's out of 8 billion people on this planet. It's a person to person called just for you saying, Hey kid, I'm thinking about you. I love you. I'm with you. I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. Well, you know, as I'm listening to you share those things, it's just coming out rapid fire. I know it's coming right out of your heart. I've often yes. used the phrase divine coincidences, but I think I'm going to change my rhetoric. Uh, maybe I'll <laughs> borrow from you. And, and somewhere in remote part of Canada, maybe they'll think I came up with the phrase, God winks myself. <laughs> But, well, you know, go right ahead and claim it, it, Mike. But, you know, Hallmark <laughs> has picked up on this. I think they've done three movies already on this whole uh, Godwinks um, uh, theme. And as yeah. I was sharing with you, my daughter, she uh, dresses a lot of the people for Hallmark. And I constantly joke with her that, you know, everything comes to a perfect climate uh, on Christmas Eve. It snows, they get married, and everybody lives happily ever after. And that's, right. That's why I have the dent on the side of my head where she's hit me so many times. <laughs> but I want to ask you a question. Everybody is watching. Everybody is listening. But how do you know God is listening to our prayer and hasn't yeah. forgotten about us in times of trouble? The more you speak to God, the clearer the voice becomes. Yes. You know, even with God wings, people say, gosh, there are certain people that have all these God wings. How come, how do I get God wings? You know, which is a, which also is another, another phrase for answered prayer because God answers our prayers through God wings. He shows himself to us. There's no word in the English language for answered prayer. So people have now used this little word God mm -hmm. wink to fill that vacancy. And, you know, uh, God, God winks are, and hearing God is like uh, driving in the country uh, listening to a radio station, yes. you get a lot of static. And the closer you get to the tower, mm -hmm. the closer you get to the signal and the source of the mm -hmm. signal, the clearer the voice. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. The closer we get to God, mm -hmm. the more we're going to see God winks and we're going to hear his voice mm -hmm. or see his communication to us through those God wakes. And you know, there was a great evangelist, William Temple, back in, I think, the 1600s, was it? 1650s, yeah. And he was, he was very English, and he, he was... Well, he must have been important. Yes, 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 they made him a sir. That's right, they made him a sir. Yeah, right. And so uh, he said, when I pray, coincidences happen. When I don't, they don't. Of course, he didn't know God winks. We can't blame, we can't him, for blame that. him for that. Yeah, right. well, but, I go ahead. Isn't that great that the more you pray... The more you see his presence in, in every part of your life. Yeah. You know, I was thinking about the Hallmark twist, and I believe one of the reasons that the, your Godwing stories have become uh, Hallmark movies, especially at the Christmas season, is because we want a happy ending. We want to know, does God really care? Yeah. Because we feel so messed up. The world is messed up. And while I don't want to admit personally that I'm going through those struggles, we all know, and my wife actually looks at me when I peek around the corner when she's watching a Hallmark, and she says, you really do like this, don't you? I hate to admit it, but we, <laughs> know. we all want a happy ending. It. We all want a happy ending. No. That's, That's right. right. And also, these stories, these Godwing stories are all true, which Absolutely. makes it different than yeah. some of the other stories. So people look at them and think, wow, if that happened for them, it could happen for me. And every one of the Hallmark movies are called a God wink Christmas. Yes. And there's, so we, we say God wink one, two, three, and mm -hmm. now a God wink Christmas number four. We just finished production on this weekend and it'll be airing in America on December 11th. Usually it follows in Canada by a week or two. Uh, and I know that you'll have a chance to see it up there too. And there's always an amazing wow ending 
because yeah. God winks make you say, wow, what are the odds of that? Well, this particular God wink story, it's called a God wink Christmas miracle of love. It has the biggest God wink wow of all of them. Miracle. Well, we're looking forward to that. I'm going to ask Julie to join us right now because I know she has a burning question for you as well. And it's probably mm -hmm. about tell us your best story. But Julie, <laughs> jump in. Well, I, I know in my own life how my husband and I got together is nothing but a whole bunch of God winks. Uh, no matter how much I try to fight against it, it's so amazing <laughs> to look back and see what God was doing. And, and it's crazy. So I have to ask, how, how did the two of you... Uh, uh, work together as a couple? Because I know that there's been many seasons in my own life where my husband and I work together, and it, it's always interesting to see, you know, how God works in that. <laughs> well, we've been married over 22 years, and if we've had an argument, I sure don't remember it. I can't ever remember. <laughs> I do. No. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's called selective hearing. Right. We, we, you know, we have disagreements. <laughs> But yeah, I, I think but we that's just not an argument. No, no we respect just, yeah, each other. Right, yeah. But again, we pray together, you well, know, every key. single day. When we first got yeah. together, we started praying. And that's how the partnered prayer came about in the 40 day prayer challenge that we started praying together. And we saw the most amazing things happen. As you you often say, Squire, it was like throwing a sponge, you know, in a sink. And all of a sudden you see it expand when two people pray together, two well, or more. Well, that's why I, that we were wanting to ask about the 40-day prayer as well. So mm -hmm. tell us more about that. Well, you know, we, we discovered, having had been in failed marriages, both of us, and we had never even thought of praying with our spouses. And we, as we wander around and talk to people and, and, and have dinner with people, and we, we find that most people have never heard of the idea of a husband and wife praying together Consistent. or two wow, people coming together and praying consistently. Mm -hmm, right. And so we decided to devise this little architectural plan, a scaffolding, if you will, where we challenge people to pray together five minutes a day. That's all it takes, mm -hmm. five minutes. God can do wonders mm -hmm. with a few crumbs mm -hmm. from us, okay? Isn't that interesting? Five I love that God can do a few wonders uh, uh, with a few crumbs, like a lot. It's so true. Multiplication. I mean, he, it's yeah, the multiplication, absolutely. the expanding, the that's, sponge. That's mm -hmm. all it takes, just a few, like a little seed, mm -hmm. a little here. And five minutes a day for 40 days, and we say it can be over the phone if you have to. It, it's best if you're praying together and you ought to try to do that every day, praying together. But it, sometimes it has to be you're in the backseat of a cab on the way to an airport. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to text. Mm -hmm. But praying together five minutes a day for 40 days, we guarantee you, and we can make this guarantee because we've been making it for 10 years and nobody has ever said it didn't work. Well, we have the receipts. We have the facts, too. <laughs> we have some evidence. We actually want we knew that it worked because we we tested all these couples and we uh, we went. We tried. We, we knew that there was a cause and effect. So we eventually got to Baylor University mm -hmm. who said they would do the first ever empirical study of what happens when two people pray together consistently for right. so many days. This is 40 days, well, yeah. And we have some facts on that that will blow your mind. Well, we we the search, the research is still in process. Mm -hmm. We are collecting the data, collecting the surveys, and they can do that on our website, praystay.org. And you can take the Baylor survey at the beginning and at the end of the 40 days, and then to help you measure how well you did, you get an app read out immediately of the 20 questions that are most important in the survey uh, and it's called my prayer score so you get to see wow, cool. how well you did now uh, we just did some preliminary uh, information and if people who took uh, the survey uh, happiness went up by 18 percent compromise went up by 22 percent feelings of delight rocketed to 30 percent Love making, listen, guys, <laughs> went up 20%. <laughs> Marital stability went up 16 points, and the fear of divorce plummeted to, to zero. zero. Wow, let's end on that. That is awesome. Okay. I feel like we just touched on stuff, but that that is so cool. Yeah, I'm so thankful you've been with us today. Well, I want you to come back and give us more yes. of those uh, reports. Uh, I'm going to 
give up some extra time right now. I'm going to ask you in 30 seconds, what is your best God wink story? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, there are a, a, many of them already made into movies. <laughs> and probably our best one right now is the one that's going to be on Netflix in February about a trooper in Rhode Island who wanted to be in, in the canine unit. And he had ADD, and he finally got paired up with a rescue dog that also had ADD, <laughs> and they and they overcame the impossible, rose to the top. There was a lady who was advocating for this rescue dog because it was going to be put down in two hours, and this cop came along and took this dog, and seven years later, wow. in real life, not in the movie, but seven years later, they went on a search. And they found a boy in the woods. It turned out to be the boy of that lady who advocated for the dogs to live, for, for Ruby to live. It's an amazing God wink story. Every God wink story will make you say either, wow, or what are the odds of that? Mm -hmm. And in this movie, you do that. So well, true. Well, thank you so much for being a part of the program today. We're looking forward to having you come back. Yes. God's peace and blessing on you. Yes. And uh, we're all going to be watching for his winks. Time now for The Word with Mike as he delves into some Philippians and the beauty and promises God has for people who pray. Hey, we're glad you're with us today. And I know that you have to be encouraged as we listen to Squire and Louise share about their God wink stories. But that reality can be not just for them. God wants it to be for you because there are no coincidences with God. I want to go on record by saying that. Uh, we might think there are, and people will try to tell you that, but over and over again, I have seen how God answers prayer. The Bible says that we know that in all things, God is working for the good of those who love him. But we're in a battle. We're in a spiritual battle. And as we think about the battle that we're in, we come to the book of Philippians today, and we realize the importance of prayer. And the reason we got to pray is because there's always things happening in our lives. And so as Paul comes to this passage where he's going to teach us about prayer, he's dealing with a relational issue. And there's a relational issue between two of the ladies in the church. Now, it could have been two men, but in this case, it's two ladies. And I want to read the scripture, and, uh, and then we're going to move on it. It says, Now I appeal to Yodia and Syntyche, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Now, if you thought listening to Squire and Louise was somewhat like a reality TV show, you might have been right. But what we see here are reality relationships. And even in the church, in the context of God's people, we see reality relationships going south. And what happened between these two ladies? Well, we don't know exactly, but there was a huge disagreement. And it was so huge that people were aware of it. And Paul actually writes about it. So the news had circulated back to him. Have you ever had that kind of a situation? Those things don't bring honor to God, but I'm glad it's recorded in scripture because it shows the humanity uh, of people. It reveals my own humanity and how much I need God. I need God to wink into that situation of a relationship that we feel could never be healed to know that it can. And so when you're in a relationship that is going south, here are some things that you can do. 
Ask God to give you his feelings for that person. You'll be amazed at how quickly they can change. And then find something good that you can say about them. And you know, folks, it's not that hard. And then don't speak about them to others in a derogative way. And so when you ponder those things, then we're going to experience what Paul writes in verse 4. And I want to go on and read the scripture. He says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. So here's a situation. Relationships were going south. But how do we get things to go north? And what we see is reality reactions is what I've caused it. And the reality reaction is when things go north. How can you change the climate in your relationship right now? How can you make things improve? Well, Paul gives us his example. Here he is on death row. He says, I'm going to choose to rejoice. He says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. He's on death row, and he's choosing to rejoice. He said, let everyone see that you're considerate. It means be reasonable. Don't always be pushing hard to win the argument. You might win the argument, but you could lose the war in that relationship. And then the final thing that he says is where we want to dwell for the next minute or two is choose to pray. Choose to pray. And as we ponder the Godwinks uh, conversation today, let's read what Paul says in verse 6. He said, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Now, folks, you know as well as I do that we want to experience a new reality. We want a new reality in our life, and it happens when you start to pray. Scripture is teaching us here, don't worry, just pray. But worrying is like second nature. I want you to know that worrying is going to steal your joy. But when you pray, when you get down on your knees and pray, guess what? Your knees stop shaking. That is just a reality. But as you pray and invite Jesus into the midst of the situation, your perspective begins to change and you can experience his incredible peace. Jesus said, peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled and neither let it be afraid. What an incredible gift. And Paul is saying in everything by prayer and then with petition, with thanksgiving, because that is the statement of faith. Let your requests be made known to God. I want to encourage you today to let your requests be made known to God, to experience and to expect his God winks right where you are right today. Now, Julie, as we've been sharing today, lots to process. What's, what's jumping out in your mind? I have a couple things. First of all, always ask yourself, what is the end goal? I, and, and the reason why is, do you want restoration? If you want restoration, then don't let hurt drive the way you communicate. And I'm saying ouch with this because I, I, I'm weak here. I know that's an issue. It touches all of us. It does. And, but, and the second one was when I got this from Godwinks. It was perfect. It says, uh, when a problem arises, deal with it in an unemotional, rational way. Refuse <laughs> to give it any more power than it deserves. So that can rob our joy. And so I thought that's so powerful. If you don't worry, God will pray and don't give power to it. And when we blow up, we create so much collateral damage, oh, don't we? Oh, do we ever. I know, I'm guilty. And then we're trying to <laughs> pull together all the different pieces. It's a really good reminder. Yeah, and he says in everything, we're to give thanks. It doesn't yeah. mean we deny the fact that there are things that cause us fear or anxiety. No. But I have to consciously say, Lord Jesus, will you take this situation? I am turning it over to you. And so right now, today, I want to invite you to turn your situation over to God and say, will you meet me right here, right now?
So, Mike, I was reading in the Wall Street Journal, and they were talking about the science of prayer. And some of the things I noticed they were saying about there's health benefits, physical benefits, emotional benefits. They're talking if about if you pray. If you pray, okay. and you you feel emotional support. They said that you feel more connected. Um, it helps couples to to have a chance to calm down if they pray for each other. Um, people feel more protected. Well, that's and what Squire and Louise were talking exactly. about how they and, pray together. And they say crisis. And we've all been going through a major crisis that they're finding more and more people are choosing to pray. I thought that was very interesting. Well, I hope that's an encouragement to everyone today. Yeah. And I want to encourage you today to think about what would it look like if you started to pray? I know that what has been the strength of my own relationship uh, for over 40 years with my wife has been the fact that we pray together. And uh, that is so important. You might have never started to pray on a regular way. So let me invite you to do something like this. When you get up in the morning, to take time. Start with 10 minutes, maybe 15. Take a few moments and start reading from the scripture. You can start with the book of Psalms or maybe the book of Philippians where we are, and just to read a chapter. And then invite the Lord to speak to you. That's right. If you ask Jesus to speak to you, his spirit will begin to speak to you from the scriptures. And then as you're listening for his voice, commit to him the things of the day. Talk to him about what you're dealing with, what you're going through. Now, this might seem kind of hokey, but a few years ago, I started to use a journal. And Julie, it has shaped my life. And in the mornings, probably five times a week, sometimes seven times a week, I write down. And normally I start off, you know, if I see you and I saw you this morning, I say, good morning, mm -hmm. how are you? And how are you doing? Well, I often do that in my journal. And so th today, though, I changed my routine. Because whenever I see somebody, uh, I say, how are you doing? And right. I said, good morning, Lord. Uh, I, I want to write and say, how are you keeping? And, <laughs> and I just thought, I don't, I'm not used to that language. And when I did that, I just heard God saying, Michael, I'm fine. I'm just fine. <laughs> and, and then he told me why he was fine. Wow. And this changed me. It was like he spoke to me. He said, I'm fine because I'm the unchanging God. That's Hebrews 13, 7. And he said, Michael, I'm just fine because... I'm the beginning and the end. I hold it all together. And then he said, I'm just fine because I'm your refuge and strength. Wow. I thought, wow. And that began to shape my life. Mm. Folks, that's why I walk with God. That's why I've invited him into my life to be my Savior and Lord. And I want to close today and invite you to just start right now. Would you pray this prayer with me? And then write to me afterwards and let me know so I can send you some material to help you in your spiritual journey. Here's this simple prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, today I'm asking your son, the Lord Jesus, to be my savior. I've failed, I've sinned, but I believe that you love me and died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. And I'm asking you to forgive me for my wrong, to be the leader and Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I can follow you. Amen.